Thanks to the guys over at Frontier, I managed to gain exclusive gameplay access of Planet Coaster 2. And I can now share the footage that I captured with you. I'm going to show you everything what's worth getting excited about. This exclusive hands-on gameplay session was split into two parts and I was able to do two things. The first thing I was able to do is play the third installment of the campaign missions. So that is the first thing we will be looking at. I then also had the ability to dive into sandbox mode and I really did dive in and found a lot of interesting things so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. This video is going to be separated into different segments so if you want to jump to the section about all the roller coasters and the dark rides that's right you heard me correctly bit of a spoiler just go down to the timestamp and you can have a jump around into sections of this video that you're most interested in the first thing i could do was jump into the third mission of the campaign and i did enjoy it. this was kind of like a nice induction how things work but also i had to use my own brain to figure out some things because there's a lot of managerial aspects when it comes to planet coaster 2 so if you're that type of player you really are going to enjoy it obviously you've got the sandbox mode as well for people who really want to get creative that is where my heart is i'm not going to lie and i'm also not going to lie about the fact that i'm quite new to the planet coaster game that's right i did play a little bit of planet coaster one you probably know my stuff and my content from planet zoo though that is where i started my planet journey so to speak so jumping into planet coaster 2 was a little bit of a difficult transfer for me coming from planet zoo but also familiar it was very familiar in the sense that it was story driven obviously it's the campaign mission you've got certain objectives to meet like you would expect and you've got new characters narrating and coming into the story and to be honest with you it wasn't really easy but it was also wasn't really difficult it was quite good for a third installment of a campaign mission and i first started playing around with the pathing system and with the water flumes or water slides if you live in england i don't know why people call them water flumes i always, i've always called them water slides they are called water flumes in the game though if you just are wondering and just placing down some blueprints of pools as well and trying to just manage my park and to get everything working and make sure I've got power supply because there is more managerial aspects so you need power which you obviously you'll need power but you also need water supply to keep your water clean and to keep your water pumping around your pools and water cleanliness in your pools now what the difference I could see when it came to stuff like this and did quite find it difficult to actually be able to figure this out is the fact that you need to connect your power supplies to a generator and then distribute it throughout you, your zoo but if you think i think it's called a transmitter now or a distributor now if you put that next to the actual power supply or the water supply and connect it it will power up that area or you can use pipes i know this is getting a bit complicated here but you can use pipes going from facility to facility so like a water pump to a pool and i did find that aspect of the game quite difficult to manage at first but once you get used to it you get used to it the power has obviously got to power your staff facilities also and what i didn't realize which i didn't click on which i should have done because it is actually been in a trailer and and in a frontier live stream is that you actually need changing rooms in your parks to for your guests to be able to get changed into their swimming costumes to be able to actually use any of the pools so they can't actually go to the pools without having a changing room in your park so that's definitely something you need to remember if you want to include water slides in your parks it took me around 40 minutes to complete the bronze objectives of mission 3 of the campaign and then I was able to jump straight into sandbox mode. One thing what really took me back and you really got to take into account that this is kind of like a, like a, a pre-built beta aspect of the game it's not the full build so you are going to see glitches and stuff like this but what took me back was how beautiful it looks and how smooth everything reacted right let's talk about building and customizing stuff and building options we have got a resize more now you probably know this if you've seen anything from planet costa but you could pretty much reside any um any item any construction item any cosmetic item that you want to put in your zoo as you can see i've done that with this giant moving fish what's attached to one of our flat right here i also did it with one of the pool inflatables but it was quite cool that like you can get a massive lilo or a massive rubber dinghy as for building other stuff it's very similar to planet coaster one 
and Planet Zoo. So it's everything you know and love. It just feels very smooth though, which I'm quite impressed with. And obviously we've got that resize option, what I've just mentioned. We are going to be able to do little tricks like build items on the grid and copy them over easy and stuff like that. What I've done tutorials on Planet Zoo, you can still build in those same ways. And what took me back actually was the amount of like construction items there was in this base game um gameplay footage i managed to get like th there was a lot of customization options so people who really want to dig down and, and customize stuff and build extravagant stuff they really have got everything they need as soon as they buy the base game right let's talk about the pathing system now this is a major major improvements and we've got so many different ways to actually create and build your pathing systems in your parks now we've got the the traditional method what you can see me using here the on the grid method my favorite method upon planet zoo but you can alter that grid you don't have to be on a four by four grid you can see i've created really small paths at the start of this square and then bigger paths as we go along you can see me now using the drawing tool now this is going to be a very good tool when creating plaza areas you can see you can just draw the area you want to place a path down I've noticed that paths seem to go on paths, on top of paths, on top of paths. It's like a stamp tool, this pathing system. So you can actually place paths on top of paths. You can place attractions on top of paths. You can place pools on top of paths. And it seems to all just merge into one. Um, it, it might be a bit fiddly at the start, but I think it's going to give the ultimate option for customization here and to have your path exactly how you want it. We've been crying out for a new pathing system when it comes to Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster, and we're finally getting it. I also found this little kind of trick. I don't know actually what I was doing or what this is supposed to do, but I kind of just like created weird paths with this. I'm sure this is going to come in use and another content creator will be able to find some mad use for this tool. Maybe not me, maybe somebody else. But yeah, he seems to be able to do whatever you want with paths, which is great. Finally, we've got that option. By the way, if there's anything you think I've missed or not picked up on what is new from Planet Coaster or Planet Zoo, something what I've not noticed, then drop a comment in the comment section below let's have a chat about planet coaster 2 actually what are you most looking forward to what changes have you seen in this footage what i managed to capture what i might have missed and what you're most excited about let me know in the comment section below you might as well hit that like button while you are there right let's talk about rides and attractions and i try to just skim through everything here from log flumes roller coasters water rides and stuff like that in the menu to show you what we're going to have in planet coaster 2 if there's anything different from planet coaster 1 i'm not too sure feel free to pause the video when you want to have a look at the names to see what's new or what we are getting but i try to just skim through it i only had um, two hours gameplay as i've already told you so i try to get everything in as i can i'm trying to show you everything here so these are the coasters these are all the coaster rides you can see we have a wide variety of coasters including the special category of coasters for so twisting coasters and indoor dart rides and stuff like that ghost trains log flumes you name it we're probably going to get it in planet coaster 2 Building coasters and rides in Planet Coaster 2 is going to be pretty much the exactly same as Planet Coaster 1, but with more options. We've got the options to duplicate things over when we go to customize our coasters. So you can actually put customization items on one side of the coaster, press duplicate, it'll go on the other side of the coaster. And whatever you put on your coasters will move with your coasters. They will move around whatever, however you customize your coasters, whatever construction pieces you put on, they will stick to your coasters is what I'm trying to say. Also, we've got some new smoothing options as well. As for flat rides, you can see we've got the blueprint flat rides, but if you go on brand new or make new construction new, construct new sorry these are the list of all the flat rides as well and we are getting a plethora of flat rides with some new ones included and again you can customize these how you want as well and you honestly i'm really excited to have people's imagination and what they're going to come up with here we've got spinning we've got swinging we've got wheel we've got tower and we've got the special category as well on the special category you can actually have well this is what i call them anyway bumper cars as for pools and attraction when it comes to pools, water slides and water flumes, whichever you want to call it, again, the customization options are really there. You can literally draw your own pool 
and you can use kind of like a bit like a pathing system like we do with the paths to create pools like you can see me doing now this is going to be great for stuff like lazy rivers and that's right we're going to be having lazy rivers there's the option to add jets to create lazy rivers and create your own lazy rivers like you can see me trying badly to do so here when I actually started building the water slides, this is the most fun I had during this gameplay session. I just found it really interesting and I love water slides in real life. So it was, it was really nice to actually build some and then test them and have guests use them. And as long as you don't make it dangerous, you can have pretty much however you want. You can really let you an imaginative um, aspects of your brain come out of you and you can also customize it you can change the colors of the water slides like the stripes and stuff like that you can have um, tube slides open slides there's many a variety of slides that you can have and you can just see me playing about with the options of building slides here which works very similar to the options when you're building your roller coasters which you will be familiar from if you have played planet coaster one you can have multiple water slides on the same platform as well so you can make like racing slides and kid slides and stuff like that and it only takes up one lifeguard from what i've noticed obviously you've got to build an entrance and a queue system like you would do a roller coaster but yeah i think this honestly is where the most fun is going to come in from me is building these kind of water slides and unique water slides like you see in here I did try to test myself and see what like the most extravagant thing I could build was. I ended up just placing loads of different pools down. I just was really amused of how you can just play stuff very freely in this game. More freely than we've ever had it in Planet Coaster 1 or Planet Zoo in that fact. I managed to actually create an infinity pool which went into another infinity pool. I added the water pieces from the construction menus, the effect pieces to make it look like one pool led into another pool. Then I found out you can actually place paths in pools. I don't know. And that is kind of like a quick summary of everything I got to get hands on during my Planet Coaster 2 exclusive gameplay. Obviously there's so much more stuff I could go over like the staffing and the lifeguards and, and more customization options. But honestly this video would be so long, I'm going to try to separate it into different videos in the future. I hope this insight you did enjoy, if you did then hit that like button. If you are new to my content and my videos, my name's Adam, I make Planet Zoo content and now obviously Planet Coaster 2 content, so if you're into that kind of stuff you might as well subscribe. But I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will catch you in the next Planet Coaster 2 video.